Yeah, 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 yeah. Here we go. As one Crookshank, your one and only Move Swiftly speaker, checking in for a daily Move Swiftly thought, giving you a perspective on teamwork that you will not get anywhere else. Man, as a as a diehard, I grew up a diehard Washington Redskins fan, and it was quite the sight. It was quite interesting to see yesterday RG3, the former savior of this entire savior of the entire franchise it was quite an interesting sight to see rg3 interviewing kirk cousins somebody that was his backup at one point interviewing him after kirk cousins ends up in a pro bowl with a different team all right so let me just let, let, let me just break this down for you guys all right because i have been on record i have said it so many times i'm almost tired of hearing myself say it all right the nfl does not need a league they don't need to the the draft all that shit we need to cut the draft and create a feeder system all right this is why like the the example that i just told you what i just said is a prime example why the NFL has got to stop all of this hype, all this bullshit behind the NFL draft, all this attention that we give to the NFL draft. We need to cut that and focus on a feeder system. Focus on creating a feeder system. Understand, RG3, they gave up, must have been what, 2012, or I believe, yeah, about 2012 time. They gave up everything. They gave up everything to get the second pick so they can pick RG3. And then in the fourth round, they go and pick Kirk Cousins. All right. They're going to pick Kirk Cousins. And you see how that whole thing panned out. And it's been years since that time. And the franchise has yet to recover. All right. And it's the same thing that's happened with Baker Mayfield. And the list goes on and on. It's because the NFL does not need another league. The problem is all of the hype that goes on to this draft, and we pay players that have yet to be proven. We have not invested in developing players. And too often, too often, do people think that the the solution is to create another league or to create like an xfl or a usfl a spring league all of that shit makes no sense it makes no sense here's why here's why <sighs> when you try to create a separate league outside of the nfl when you try to create a separate league outside the nfl now you are competing you are competing with the idea with the concept of sending your kid off to college while playing like giving your sending your son off to get an education while playing football you're competing with that idea whether you like it or not and nowadays the fact that now that college football players get to be paid can be paid it makes no sense you have to try to you're gonna go and try to sell a player to come play for your brand new startup league when they could be making money but while they're getting a degree, while they're getting a college education, makes absolutely no sense, will not work. And, it, and the more people do it, the more it ruins the league. Now, for the, the, the franchise that I tried to start and what the NFL does need to do, just listen, just a couple of miles from here, there's a ballpark. There's a ballpark named Ballpark for Palm Beaches, right? Paul ba ballpark for Palm Beaches. And if you go over there, you see the Houston Astros, you see the Washington Nationals. You see MLB leagues, I mean MLB franchises, specific franchises who have a farm team, a farm system in which they move players up. That's what the NFL needs. They need, for example, if we want to, since we'll, we'll keep it local. One of the things when I worked for the Miami Dolphins Foundation, one of the things that I noticed that they actually did do a great job was, great job at was, connecting the Miami Dolphins with the high schools in the area that had like high school media day and making sure that the community was connected. So for example, if you want to use the example for the want to use the example of a team like the Miami Dolphins. If the Miami Dolphins were to put a franchise in a let's say uh, let's say they put a franchise in Jamaica, right? And they create a solid franchise in which that team is their absolute that that team is like their that team is like their double a ball club in which they send players who they might be thinking about drafting that they want to keep in shape and stuff like that then we have a solid system then you have an opportunity to send players there to develop get better and you don't have to deal with the media you don't have to deal with a player who gets too much attention from the media i, I listen i watched that entire rg3 thing take you know i watched it from start to finish as a diehard fan RG3, 
the reason that it ended up the way it ended up is because he got his talent was exposed to the media and the the year he got hurt from this from his rookie year when he got hurt all the way to the next season he had to start that week one game because you had Gatorade sponsoring him you had Subway sponsor and you had all these sponsors that they were trying to keep happy so it became this big major marketing thing all in for week one all in for week one and you see how much that ruined his actual career when your talent gets exposed like that all of a sudden now you don't you just don't have the ability to control it as a Washington as the Washington Redskins they didn't have the ability to 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 kind of cater him to bring him in and say look you need to get your knee right you need to develop the only thing that they could do at that point was get rid of him and start the backup bring in the guy that was his backup at one point and that's why i i, I will i will <laughs> listen i will do this i will fight for this as long as i'm here on this earth but the nfl franchises need to figure out theater systems this is why when i started the ocean city sharks i was going about it looking for looking to work with fitness sponsors looking to work with the local community i joined a chamber of commerce i the the one of the things i actually did was <clears throat> i went and tried to reach out to a a sports bar named green turtle because i know steve bashotti who's the owner of the baltimore ravens i know he was part of opening one of those green turtles and i wanted to create a system in which look the the team doesn't get a whole lot of media attention but it's one of those things where the baltimore ravens could have came in and said look this this is one of our systems this is one of our franchises and we send our guys to this specific team because of how it helps our local fan base very very important that you grasp that because again as a fan of the game as a person who works in sports works on this game has been involved with this game for virtually my entire life it you see the writing on the wall this thing is going in the wrong direction and the more and more we have to pay the rg3s of the world i don't want to use rg3 as an example the more you have to pay somewhere like a baker mayfield the more you have to pay these first round picks the the more <clears throat> the more in a hole the, the more hole the bigger hole it creates for us to get out of and it's a, just a really really fucking shitty business model and it, it's going to be hard to recover from it all right I'll, i dived actually i'll, I'll do a, a entire full full episode on this if you listen to this on the move swiftly podcast just hit the follow button excuse me just hit the follow button there's going to be a full episode full episode coming on this <sighs> And also, speaking of the Move Swiftly podcast, you can listen to it on makeyamove.com. It's available on all streams, but I want you to go to makeyamove.com because that is the one stop. That's a one stop shop for all your teamwork and personal development needs. As one Crookshank, your one and only Move Swiftly speaker, checking out. You guys continue to move swiftly. We will talk more soon.